Good evening to all the participants on this call. This call, as you know, is regarding Anupam's recently announced acquisition. Before we proceed the call, let me remind you that the discussion may contain forward-looking statements that may involve known or unknown risks, uncertainties, and other factors. It must be viewed in conjunction with our business risk that could cause future results, performance, and achievements to differ significantly from what is expressed or implied by such forward-looking statements. Please note that we have mailed the press release regarding the acquisition and the same is also available on the stock exchanges. In case you have not received them, you can write to us and we'll be happy to send it over. To take us through the details and answer your questions today, we have management of Anupam Rathayan represented by Mr. Anand Desai, Managing Director, Mr. Azul Malkani, CFO, Mr. Mushal Thakkar, Deputy CFO and Mr. Ravi Desai, Sales Head. We will start the call with a brief overview of the acquisition and then conduct the Q&A. I also urge the participants to limit their discussion strictly to the acquisition as separate earnings call will be conducted after Q3 FY22 results. With that said, I will now hand over the call to Mr. Anand Desai. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Kano. And I welcome everyone to this call. I hope you all are keeping safe in the third wave of the COVID-19. As we all must be knowing till now, our board of directors have approved the acquisition of around 25% of the total equity shareholding and joint control of Tensec Industries Limited from its promoter for around this 148 crores. Further, companies can also acquire up to 26% through open offer for this 154 crores more. Just to give you a background of this transaction, we were in discussion with Miller Group since the last five years to acquire this stake. Now, finally, we were able to correct this deal. We have been using KF since last six years and are currently the largest user of KF in India. Based on his experience of using and handling KF, we are also working to develop products which use HF. But because of non-availability of HF, we were not able to commercialize derivatives based on HF. So now with the acquisition, we would be able to take this line of products forward. Also because of working on KF, we have the requisite, we have developed the requisite technical expertise in this product and the required skill set of our technical people are there to showcase the, that we are able to use the KF on, at this level. Over the years, Anupam Rasayan has become a dominant player in coordination process using KF and we have plans to get and we had plans to get into hydrogen fluoride and other storage derivatives and further strengthen our position in this segment. With the, in fact, this is the benefit of backward integration that we are getting we will have uninterrupted access of our own hydrogen fluoride, potassium fluoride, and other such surrounding agents. And this will also give a headroom for further efficiencies. We also plan to make further investments in TENFAC to increase capacities as well as build infrastructure to manufacture advanced intermediates as huge amount of land, around 50%, is still vacant and available. This acquisition also gives us impetus to add many more products and building blocks having applications in agro, pharma, and polymers. Two examples would be fluoroelastomers and fluoroelectrolytes having applications in polyamide, semiconductors, and photoresistant polymers. The products manufactured at Tantac will support Anupam's key business of custom manufacturing and will be used by Anupam for custom manufacturing key intermediates, advanced intermediates, and end products, active ingredients. I would like to hand over to Mr. Abdul Malkani, our CFO, to further give overview of this acquisition. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Anand Bhai. Good evening, everyone. So, also again, request all the participants to keep the discussion related to this acquisition only because we are going to announce Q322 results around 10th February and subsequently we will have a earning call in which we discuss in detail about the Anupam related matters. So now, as mentioned by Anand, that we are extremely delighted to announce that our board of directors has approved the acquisition of controlling stake in Tensec Industries, a listed entity. As per the agreement and closing condition, Anupam Rasan will acquire 24.98% from Aditya Birla Group and up to 26% from public shareholders by way of an open offer. The total consideration for the deal will be approximately 300 crores, which will be funded through a DAG. And we are acquiring a 25% stake from Aditya Birla Group at Rs. 148 crores. And immediately after that, we will go for the announcement of an open offer 
in which we can get maximum 26% at the consideration of 164 crores. Initially, it will be the subsidiary of Anupam Rasayan. It's a debt-free company and have a good ROC and ROE of 35% and 41% respectively. Anupam Rasayan will be a joint promoter and will have a management control in Tensat Industries along with the Tamil Nadu government. Now, regarding the timeline for the completion of the transaction, as per the agreement with Billa, we have to complete the transaction within 21 business days from the date of the agreement. So, we have to complete the transaction of Birla Group by 25th February for acquisition of a controlling stake. And simultaneously, we will go for the announcement of open offer on next week and we will complete the open offer process in next 60 days. Now, coming on to the Tensec, uh, some details uh, sharing about the Tensec Industries. So, Tensec Industries incorporated in 1972 is a specialty fluoride chemical manufacturer. Company is also a leading producer of hydrochloric acid and is engaged in the manufacturing of other organic and inorganic fluorine-based products such as aluminum fluoride, sodium silico fluoride, and potassium fluoride. In addition to that, sulfuric acid and uh, oleum are the key products of the company. Company has a manufacturing unit at Kadlar, Tamil Nadu, which is spread across 60 acres and is strategically located adjacent to the Kadlar port. And uh, now talking about the revenue and the profitability, Tensec Industries posted a revenue of 253 crores along with the EBITDA of 65 crores and PAT of 46 crores at the end of a nine month of FY22. Now talking about the what type of uh, benefit Anupam is looking for, then this acquisition, we would say that this acquisition is a strategic decision to expand the product series under the fluorination chemistry of Anupam. And since last four years, Anupam has been working on niche and advanced fluorine derivatives for which key raw material is a hydrochloric compound and its derivative. For this, the raw material which is KF and uh, potassium fluoride and HF, hydrochloric acid is very important and these are the key raw material. Now, this has been tied up due to this acquisition of Tensac. And these products are not currently manufactured in India. And Anupam will be the first company to produce this in India. Plus, we see the fluorochemical as the next level of growth for us. And initially, it will bring synergies by way of backward integration because Anupam Rasan is also one of the largest consumers of potassium fluoride in India, which would be supplied by Tensac. This will not only reduce our import uh, dependence on China, but will also allow us to launch a new derivatives under this chemistry, which was not possible earlier. And with access to this basic chloro compound and expertise of uh, Anupam Rasan's core R&D team, we will be able to introduce uh, niche chlorine derivatives in the coming years. And now with the addition of this uh, new chloro derivatives, we are looking for a sizable top line in next three to four years. Now let us close our opening remarks and we can open the forum for Q&A. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with a question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may enter star and one on your touchstone telephone. If your questions have been answered and you wish to withdraw yourself from the queue, you may enter star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask a question, you may enter star and one. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you may enter star and one. We have the first question from the line of Rishab Sisodia from Concept Investwell. Please go ahead. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, congratulations on the acquisition. So I have a couple of questions. Uh, first thing, uh, the product portfolio of Tampak, if you could please explain what is the split between speciality and the commodity chemicals for the company. So let me say in the last three quarters, the company has been exceptional revenues and margin. What could explain this? Uh, is it because of the higher commodity prices that the, because of the higher commodity prices or it's the speciality chemicals that the company produces? Yeah. 
yeah regarding uh, yeah your question regarding the split of the specialty chemicals and the commodity product this bifurcation right so you know, we can consider that uh, yeah we can take the base of nine months financial in which nine months after ended december 21 the company has posted a revenue of 250 crores if we see the break up of this 250 crores then uh, we can say that out of this uh, about 25% from the commodity product which is the, uh, which is the, the specialty sulfuric acid and uh, another uh, 70 75% revenue comes from the hf kf and aluminum fluorides and other products the major so to put the sum it up as in uh, the major jump in the revenue that because it is has been because of higher commodity prices is that correct yeah if you see the 75% revenue comes from this hf kf and aluminum fluorides only 20 yeah. out of the total revenue 25% revenue comes from the sulfuric acid here. so yeah in special so price impact you can just be limited to top line of 25% only okay Um, and so, what uh, uh, going forward? What do we expect? Uh, do have any cross sell opportunities with Tantac as a customer base uh, for them and for us as well? And the expected, you know, margin and the assets and so far. Yeah, we see. We uh, currently, if we see, then uh, total the uh, out of the total capacity, current capacity utilization for the HF and KF is about sixty-five to seventy percent. and the aluminum fluoride is about uh, 40% so also we will use uh, the uh, out of these three products a uh, couple of products we will use for our own captive consumption so definitely we will be able to uh, utilize capacity at a higher level from next year so it will also impact the cost as well as on the profitability profile um, so any estimator or guided number that you have in your mind or any internal estimate to have a certain amount of Uh, asset terms or ROC for the business. Yeah, ROC. Even if we say the fixed asset term of the current current fixed asset term, then current fixed asset term is already more than seven uh, for the ten sec industries, and so it will be at least uh, it. Uh, we can say that it will be sustainable, and we can expect the revenue of at least three hundred crores every year from the current uh, fixed asset. And uh, talking about the ROC and ROE, then the 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 this ROC and ROE are very robust, let's say 41% and 35% respectively. And we expect the same uh, percentage continue over uh, next two three years. Right. So if I just if I could just within one last question uh, about uh, the land parcel that you mentioned, like uh, going ahead in future, we expect to. You know, add capacities in tanker as and when we uh, find the right opportunity. So if I'm not wrong, you have mentioned 60% uh, free land is available. 50%. Would be 60 acres land, 60 acres land, and 50% is surplus land. Okay. So would it be that uh, the capex over there would be only specific to tanker only, or we could even, you know, have our own Anupam capex on, on that area if that is possible? Yeah, here uh, there are two aspects of your question. One is the capex at the ten sec. For that, uh, that figures we have been working on that. And the Anupam, yes, definitely we will uh, have some capex for this uh, fluorination chemistry because we are going to consume the HF, HF for the other uh, fluoroderivatives products. So there will be uh, some capex in Anupam also. But we have been working on that. Yeah, Ravi Bhai or Anand Bhai, would you like to add anything on that? Yeah, I'm not here, but I think Abdul, what you mentioned is correct. Uh, I'm not going to add anything more on this. Okay. Oh, okay. So thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Pratesh Vora from Mission Holdings. Please go ahead. So, can you highlight the what you will do in Tenpeg? Uh, what is the capex plan you will do, and what kind of asset turnover ratio we can see in Tenpeg in years to come? Yeah, as I mentioned, that the capex uh, after fixed asset turn of uh, more than seven, we are going to maintain because we are expecting more than 300 crores revenue every year from this fixed asset uh, based on the product mix. Otherwise, as I mentioned earlier, that currently also the fixed asset turn is more than seven, 
and the regarding the capex figures we have been working on a couple of products uh, including the capacity expansion in the existing products as well as for the new plant for the new for new new products but this uh, we have been working and uh, we have not finalized yet but can we see some kind of a step jump in the because 300 crore revenue they were done last city and 12 month right so yeah. if they continue to do 300 and margin profile is very erratic over the years so unless you have come up with a capex and a capacity expansion we will not be able to understand the working of this company so can you little bit highlight what you are plan to do in this company yeah definitely yeah yeah and we first is the our first target as i mentioned that the current capacity utilization of the key products is about 65% only so immediately we will have a scope to increase the capacity utilization because we don't know need to go to search the new market because we can uh, capital consume couple of products and the second thing is that immediately what we can do is that we can increase the capacity of the existing products also because we have a capability to consume more products uh, for our captive consumption in anupam and the third thing is the about the new capex for any project it will take a time of 12 to 18 months we have the all the business plan is ready with us but uh, we have been working on this numbers definitely we will go for the capex in next quarters but we have not finalized the numbers yet and if we finalize the capex and we will implement then uh, this will not take uh, more than 12 to 15 month uh, for the commercialization of the project because all the infrastructures and the regulatory permissions and technology is already in place okay so if i understood uh, basically you are saying that the capacity utilization will increase from present 65% it will go to 85% probably 90% yes 90% yeah okay and then you are saying the new capex will come in 12 to 18 months which will be finalized in the next quarter once you take over the company yes yes 12 to 15 months max to max yeah 12 to 15 months okay so sir can you explain why this company was having a erratic ebitda margin over the years if i leave only 2017 where it it uh, had a good ebitda margin remaining years it was not performing up to the mark can you highlight what was wrong in the company over the years yeah actually first if we see there are revenue that the capacity utilization was not there actually if we see the current year as i mentioned that particularly on the all the other key products we are utilizing capacity at 65% the sulfuric acid capacity utilization currently it is 90% but if if you see the last 2 to 3 years back in 2019-20 or 2018 uh, the capacity utilization was more, not more than 50% in any of the year this was the main reason no if you leave 2019 where the operating profit i get see at around 53 crore remaining last 2 3 years it has not cost around 30 crore of operating profit and previously yeah. you know previous 5 year 10 years back it was even operating profit was under losses and a single digit operating profit yeah 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 so can you highlight what was happened in last 2 3 years where suddenly the operating profit has increased uh yeah. and uh, i mean just last 2 3 years and what is your outlook on those further improvement in the operating profit yeah first is as i mentioned that the higher capacity utilization in last 2 3 years and consecutive higher capacity utilization this is the main reason and the second the key reason for this uh, this uh, increase in operating margin is that the flow spar and the sulfur are the key raw material of the company and the flow spar contribute uh, about 45% of the total raw material and sulfur which uh, and uh, sulfur uh, contribute about 26% of the total raw material and this potassium carbonate uh, contribute about 18% of the total raw material so company has a very uh, very developed a good supplier other than china they have reduced the dependence on china from uh, almost a significant uh, there was a dependence significant dependence on china and if you see in fy 2021 then there is the import from the china is not more than 5 to 7% and they have started the sourcing from this particularly close for started procuring from morocco vietnam 
Thailand, Canada, and some other countries. And the, the, the and the dependence on China has been reduced. So, so definitely the sourcing of from a sourcing of a material other than China is always competitive. Same as the sulfur, which contribute about the 26% of the total raw material which company procures from the local market. Very good contrast and very competitive. They are. Uh, uh, getting a uh, cheap, uh, competitive weight in India, they are number one. They are procuring from China Petroleum Private Limited, this sulfur contribute. And third is the uh, supply is for the potassium carbonate. And they purchase it from the, they have developed the sources in last three years from the Korea, Thailand, and Russia. This uh, first is the capacity, and second is the uh, development of alternative source of supply is the biggest differentiator in last three years as per our view. Okay, sir. So basically, I one more question. Suppose you are not able to garner the number of uh, share you plan to acquire, twenty six percent. Nobody tenders the shares. Yes. In that case, you will be limited to a very small, uh, small uh, a percentage of ownership. So, would you be able to still have? were able to provide a proper attention to the company where your take is very, very small. Yes, because if you see the Birla was the promoters and Birla was the uh, was handling the company and the management and control was based with the Birla only. So since they they have controlling the company since nineteen eighty along with the Tamil Nadu government, but there is a less investment from the less uh, involvement from the Tamil Nadu government side. So we don't see any challenges because uh, we are uh, uh, we are acquiring 25 percent, and even if we don't get any shares so by way of open offer, then we will be be able to continue the operation and management. Then Birla is doing it at 25 percent currently now. All right, sir. Wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, before we move to the next question, we would request participants to limit their questions to two during the initial round. We have the next question from the line of S. Ramesh from Nirmal Bank. Please go ahead. Good evening, Anand Bhai, Asal Bhai, and Ravi Bhai. Thank you very much. Congratulations on the transaction. Uh, so if I may ask, uh, just to put things in perspective, um, is there any additional working capital uh, uh, increase required in the ten pack because your valuation if you're buying it is pretty cheap. So let you understand how you've been able to uh, you know those transactions at the cheap valuation. What are the reasons for that? Yeah, if we see, uh, yeah, we, your first question is that if we do we need any additional fund for the working capital requirement? The no, we don't need any additional fund for the working capital because there is a surplus cash of 40 crore rupees uh, with the company and the working capital cycle is very good if we see the data is about 35 to 40 days and uh, simultaneously on the other side we are getting the credit from the supplier about 35 to 40 days and the inventory is about 40 days so net working capital cycle if we see then it is only 35 to 40 days only and in addition to that company have a surplus cash of 40 crore rupees in the balance sheet so we don't need an additional uh, uh, fund for this working capital requirement. What was your second question? Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So um, I was trying to understand um, the reason for the low valuation at which the existing promoters are agreed to sell. The, the prospects, as you say, is so good. Uh, is there any other uh, thing that we are missing here? No, actually we can't comment uh, before the uh, before our acquisition because but we on uh, but we can see that in last one and a half years there is a significant increase in the valuation also of this company and uh, some we, we have a focus on chemi on uh, particularly on the chemical but while the sellers don't have a main it, it comes under the core uh, core business of the overall group then uh, if you see that in the last five to six years, the company has not incurred any capital expenditure also. You, we, can, we should look at uh, this perspective also, and we can understand that when the company is not incurring any capital in the last five to six years. So that's why, uh, and, uh, and the coordination is uh, within our core chemistry of Anupam, and we can do further expansion, capex, we can increase the capacity utilization, we can go for the additional capacity, and we can make the synergies in the terms of backward integration as well as the forward integration work. 
and so this if i may take in this one last thought so if you are looking at the target opportunity you have in mind when you talk about this store and derivatives and then uh, if you also take the current product mix in and fact they are also talking about astrophenone and acetyl acetophenone and acetic acid so can you just put these things in perspective in terms of your you know, addressable market and whether this astrophenone and acetic acid production there uh, is going to be of incremental value to you Yeah, Ravi, my good. You would like to take this? Yeah. Hello. Absolutely. Yeah. So, in terms of overall, uh, although uh, you know they have the acidic acid and everything, but as Abdulba has already mentioned, uh, the key uh, proposition uh, is is more of strategic in terms of the flowing sense. So, and naturally, uh, the other raw materials or the other products uh, that they have, uh, you know, wherever we have this energy, I think we'll capitalize it. But the key purpose is within the uh, flow emission uh, chemistry. Yeah. So, sir, can you give us a sense in terms of the size of the fluorination chemistry market you are targeting? Because so, Navin Fluorine is talking about a fairly uh, attractive growth prospect, and they are kind of specialists in that. So, how do you see that opportunity for yourself, and how many years will it take for you to monetize it in terms of a meaningful share of your revenue? Uh, Abdul, would you like to take this or should I take it? No. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Ravi, I'll take it. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, We are working on uh, fluorinating products since last six years, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, all the customers were uh, after us to use, also start using HF. But because we were not having a source of HF, we were not able to commercialize product based on HF. Now with this acquisition, we shall be able to introduce this product. On this, we have already developed in the uh, on the lab and the pilot plant since last four five years. So the business is already ready. But uh, the product based on the HF is concerned, so that should mean that we should, we should be able to uh, bring out the products from uh, based on HF very fast, uh, based on certain regulatory permissions of all uh, required, which will be be getting. And these are all pharma products mainly, which are being imported into India, and then there is no current manufacturer in India at this point of time for those products. Uh, So that is the that is the main point and that is the main focus that we want to bring products out of uh, based on HF which are not being manufactured by anybody else in India. That is has been the the mainstay of Anupam throughout uh, our uh, manufacturing in uh, Gujarat and which we also do uh, and we'll also bring the sales of. Hello, I think I lost you there. Hello. Uh, gentlemen, please stay connected. Uh, we will reconnect the line for uh, Mr. Anand Desai and Mr. Ravi Desai. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the operator. We have the line for both Mr. Anand Desa and Ravi Desa reconnected. Hello. Uh, Hello, yes, sir. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I was saying that we will bring the same philosophy on them to continue to manufacture products which are not available in India using base products and chemistry and technical expertise available with us, uh, which is the same philosophy of Anupam, which will bring to us that fact. And so, so can you just uh, put some numbers to the target market you are talking about in rupees crores or million dollars? Uh, the business is quite large. This the product in which we are focusing. The total import of of them will be more than three thousand crores. Uh, we will not be able to get the full market share of this product, but we will be able to get a very high uh, business uh, percentage of this three uh, thousand crores which I mentioned. And this is only the pharma product. Uh, for the agro, also there are quite a large tonnage which is there, 
um the numbers are also in the similar phase um and we would also want to be at least at 40 to 50 percent of this tonnage uh, in the next three two to three years that is our target uh and if everything goes as per our plan thank you very much and wish you all the best i'll join back with you yeah thank thanks Ladies and gentlemen, a reminder: we request you to limit your questions to two during the initial round. We have the next question from the line of Abhijit Akela from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Good evening. Uh, congratulations and thank you so much for taking the questions. Uh, just uh, wanted to understand a couple of points. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, we mentioned that Tantra has been running at fairly low utilization levels, and yet, uh, you know, we've actually been experiencing a shortage of these materials that they produce you know hf and kf etc so just sort of trying to reconcile what exactly was the problem with their uh, facilities why they were not able to supply despite uh, you know the existence of strong demands from within india hello yeah yeah abhijit hello yeah so earlier the capacity they have increased the capacity last 2 to 3 years they have expanded the capacity particularly for the hf and kf earlier this capacity was not there the capacity was for the different products and they did some modifications and increase the capacity of the hf and kf okay um and uh, uh, you know it, would it have been possible for us to source our requirements from them instead of uh, doing the acquisition or you know what exactly were the points uh, in favor of acquiring them outright as opposed to signing a supply agreement with them yeah abhijit sir ke anand here the main focus see otherwise i am answering this question yeah so abhijit bhai what the main point uh, for the acquisition was Uh, availability of HF and uh, lower over dependency on KF. So HF basically is not uh, a transferable product as such. So that is the main reason as to why you would need to manufacture products uh, based on HF in the same premises. That is the one of the main reason for us to acquire these assets. And also lower over dependency on KF. Although uh, India and China manufacturers are there in KF and we for which. Which and we will continue to buy those products, but we continue. But we also see a huge upside in our requirement of KF going forward. So KF from Tenfac will also play a part. We will not disturb the existing business of Tenfac if they are fully committed. But if there is a already of KF available uh, from them, then we will do that. And of course, as Abdul mentioned earlier, if, if we again do a capex over there in the existing facility for HF and KF. and that extra kf which comes out then we would uh, be and if the pricing is uh, uh, available if the pricing is which is uh, logical for us then we will be buying that uh, uh, kf otherwise we will continue with our regular sources also at the same time okay thank you uh, understood so basically it's a synergy in terms of uh, production within the same premises uh, that was the main reason for it and also just wanted to uh, you know get your thoughts on uh, uh, why tanfac has been relatively you know uh, sort of lagging behind the other companies uh, in the fluorine space for the last uh, several years is it because of lack of management focus on growing that business or uh, you know lack of a maybe a, you know r&d capabilities in the specialty chemical side i mean any perspective you could share on that and uh, what uh, you know value addition anupam could add uh, on that front Abhi, I would not have to add uh, or I mean uh, uh, mention on what why it does not happen. But going forward, I promise you that we will be able to bring a huge amount of synergy uh, because of our existing uh, experience based on KF and in KF and uh, the support from our customers. So going forward, we will be able to showcase to you what we will be able to do. And I promise you, there will be huge opportunity uh, uh, which will there are there is already a huge opportunity that we will be able to claim. Uh, customers have been forcing us for uh, product based on HF derivatives since last four five years, and which we have only developed, and which we will be able to bring online quite soon based on ready to commission. Thank you, Anand. Uh, one last thing, um, in terms of market share for these products, would you have a rough sense of how much Tanfac commands in terms of you know HF, KF, etc. in India? What percentage would they be commanding? 
I think Kazal Bai is not there. Uh, well, Abhijit Bai, we will not be able to explain more on this point at this point of time. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Anand Bai. All the best. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Dhruv from HDFC Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, so, if I understand from the comments earlier, it seems uh, one of the key uh, benefits of this equation is the RM integration or the RM certainty. Uh, so, if you can probably help us, uh, say, two to three years down the line, how much of your HF and KF requirement will represent uh, tax capacity? I mean, if their capacity is, say, uh, X, how much of uh, their output are, will you be sourcing? Yeah, on KF, we anticipate quite a large uh, usage out of their plant based on the expansion which uh, will be done um, uh, for KF. On HF, I think it is quite underutilized, which we will be able to replace to a quite a large amount. I would not want to uh, give out volumes at this point of time. Maybe after three or six months, we would be able to do that. So, at least majority, it seems you would be so saying. Majority, yeah, you can, more than yeah, you can mention, you can say that, yes. Got it. Got it. And so you mentioned that um, uh, the the challenge with HF uh, customer inquiries that you were getting was that HF cannot be transported and has to be, you know, uh, synthesized in the same uh, setup or the same area where HF is getting produced. So wouldn't that still be a challenge because your capacity, your plants are in Gujarat and this is in Tamil Nadu, uh, if I'm not wrong. And uh, I mean, getting HF from there to your plant will anyway still be difficult. So would you have to invest in uh, Danfic for uh, your HF-based uh, inquiries that you have get now in future? Yeah, so as mentioned as well, there will be two phases of investment. One will be in the existing capacities and utilities of Danfic uh, to bring it up to line. And also in the derivatives for uh, products which are being uh, uh, which are based on uh, HF. So the investment will be between 200 crores in the next two to three years, which will bring in over there based on how the permissions are, our, uh, are allocated to us, uh, and uh, uh, and that will allow us to bring out products uh, based on HF out from that facility itself. Right. So uh, you, the investment will happen in Tanfic so that you can get that product probably building blocks out from there and then probably process it there or uh, process it in your in, in your own plants in say Gujarat. Right. Got it. Got it. And so uh, just to get this, uh, you know, you are already leaders in or uh, you know well advanced in KF as such. Uh, but uh, the other part is the HF, which you currently probably are not doing a lot. So, uh, just to get a, a context of uh, how the market is, say for example, of the, all the fluorine uh, chemicals that are available, or particularly in pharma or say agro, if you are talking about, uh, how much of that portion will be, you know, available through KF, and how much of that will be through HF? I mean, what I'm trying to understand: does HF now opens a much bigger market than what was available through KF, or how is that? Yeah, so as I mentioned to you, we have already lined up plants to manufacture almost around 13 products, uh, out of which uh, eight are in uh, pharma and uh, six are in uh, agro. And the total, and these, all these products, only if you consider the import component into India, there are more than 6,000 crores per year. So this will also help us to become, uh, introduce these products into India, uh, based on, um, and of course, no, no customer will shift 100% to Anupam. Uh, or to contract uh, uh, at, at, at this level. But uh, we will be able to take up a very larger share and this will also play into the government uh, tagline of Arthur Nivre Bharat. Uh, uh, and so it will be really important for us to be, you know, uh, be, uh, be, to have a, to be a second source or to be even to be a first source uh, in all these supporting products which I have just mentioned. So, and as I mentioned, the business, the total business that we are looking at this, uh, Fourteen products is uh, approximately six thousand crores as of now, and which we would like to take up as much as possible uh, based on the availability of the um, how you say the investments over there, based on the land, uh, publishing, etc. But that is a plan which we already have made, and we will be releasing this plan once we have more active control over there. Uh, and you can, I'm sure you can understand that it's just yesterday we have signed agreement. So just give us three, four, uh, three to six months and we will be able to showcase to you what we want to do more and explain to you uh, as to how we want to take this forward. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Th
Uh, sure, sir. Helpful. So, just one clarification: this 6,000 crores is uh, will be driven is an opportunity which is because of the HF thing. It is not because you cannot do that through the KF, and hence it becomes uh, important, right? Only, only HF, and all these products are coming out uh, away from India, so not from not from India. So that is what we want to target first. Uh, these are into pharma and agro, as I mentioned earlier, and the export potential is also huge. It's quite it's very there. Uh, again, uh, the validation in the exports will be a bit la uh, longer. But uh, still, that doesn't mean that there will not be any exports. We are, and we will be targeting that. Uh, most of our customers who are already our customers, all the MNCs are customers, they will be focusing us, rather forcing us to go for HS since quite last five, six years. And this is also be one of the reasons why, based on the confidence of this customer, that we are taking forward this, uh, uh, con uh, taking forward this acquisition. Perfect, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Ankur Periwal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, most of the questions have been answered, uh, you know, few clarifications. Uh, so, uh, as of now, uh, as I understand, large part of our chlorine portfolio is, is KF-based, and we do not have any HF-based product. Is that uh, understanding right? Correct. And, and this number will be around what, 15-20% uh, of our total business right now? The HS, the KF based one? Uh, KF base would be around 15, 14, between uh, 14 to 16%. Sure. And, uh, uh, you know, the 6,000 crore target market is across pharma and agro. And the 14 products which you just mentioned, we have already cracked these products or these are a, a work in progress? Uh, the sense, you see, uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have been working on this product since last five, six years. Okay. We have developed this product in the pilot and in, I mean, in lab and pilot already. But because of non availability of HF, we were not able to correct this product. But with this uh, acquisition, now we will be having a source of HF, and as HF is not allowed to be tra transported, we will have to manufacture these products over there. So, timeline for the capex is what will make uh, work, which will allow us to bring this product out from the plant. So, there is a timeline which we can see, but otherwise, uh, and the regular provisions, of course. So both these points are there. We have the two cables, but we do not see uh, this as a uh, as an HBT bin. And because the government is very uh, focused to uh, on giving fast permissions for products for making pharma uh, products, so we we hope to get the permissions quite fast. Uh, we are ready with the capex plant because we have been working on this since last five six years. So the design and PNIDs and PFDs all are ready. It is just for us to start the process. So we are waiting for the formal final handover. Once that happens, then we'll take this uh, 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 hand. Uh, we'll take this uh, uh, capex plan forward. Uh, sure, sir. Where I was coming from was whether we will need some collaboration or maybe some tie with the global player. But as I understand, we have already sort of you know cracked these products, so probably that tie up or uh, arrangement will not be required. Uh, on the product approval side, uh, uh, you know, apart from the cases, yeah. will that be an incremental time required or probably both the things will go parallel and, you know, we can see maybe some products coming in next one or two years? Yeah, on the first point of, uh, we will, we will uh, in Anupam's case also, we do not take any tax tax. Uh, as I say, so the, and that, uh, that the philosophy will also continue in temper, that we will not be taking any te uh, technology packages, uh, for any product, we'll develop, and we have developed this protein product already ourselves, which we will bring into tensor. That's the first point. The second point, um, I'm sorry, I, I lost your voice when you're saying. Uh, sorry, so uh, I was saying that, you know, these products will also require a customer approval. Uh, uh, so, and obviously the KPEX required to make these products at a commercial scale. So both these things will go in parallel, and hence we could see maybe incremental product launches coming in the next one to two years. Yeah, so basically the first thing which we will do is that we will also put up a small pilot plant and these are scale-based systems which, are, which we already use in Amazon. So we will be transferring from Amazon the scale-based uh, pilot plants over there. The, and how the generation uh, progresses is that uh, we, we have to manufacture the product uh, uh, from the location where we want to sell or rather where we want to manufacture. So once the seeds are in place in in in, in uh, in Tensor Act, uh, the plant in Tensor Act, we will, will be able to manufacture uh, from the pilot plant to small batches, and then the validation will start. And within next one and a half to two years, which is the general time taken for validation, uh, the product validation will arrive. At the same time, the capex for the on the large scale will also be going on. 
and so that by the time the plant, by the time the permissions or rather uh, the product is ready to be customers, uh, we will be able to take this uh, uh, the large batches on the plant and take the production forward also. So we should anticipate the commercial movement of the product to be within uh, 18 to 24 months for the large product. For the small product, uh, uh, there, are, there is a small plant over there which we hope to, which is a multi-purpose plant which we hope to use. Sure, sir. Uh, that's helpful. Just one last question uh, from Panfax perspective. Uh, uh, who will be the top customer, and you know what? How much share does Alipom uh, have there? As of now, we have not been purchasing much uh, from them um, because we already have uh, lines tied up with our existing supplier, uh, and we do not want to disturb that in terms of going forward also. So we will continue that. But once we have a, once we have the existing HF and the KF lines expanded. Then we'll take the module from out from that. And if there's excess material available in KF in existing lines, then we'll take uh, from uh, that. Okay, sure. That's helpful, sir. Thank you and uh, all the best. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Krishan Parwani from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, Congress on acquisition. So, a couple of clarifications, sir. Uh, so would you be transporting HF or no? Because I think Naveen does it with a special permission from one plant to another. Would you be doing that or no? As of now, no. Okay. So all of the HF-based chemistry will be in Tensec only, correct? As of now, yes. Okay. And uh, so, so, uh, so would it be the case that uh, you know uh, some of the products that you manufacture at let's say Tensec? And whatever capex that you are doing at uh, your Gujarat facilities, uh, so you can make let's say two three steps in ten fact, and after that you can bring it here. Is that the plan as well? So, so the, why the question is because would that incremental capex that you are doing at the Gujarat facilities would that have synergies with the ten fact capex or no? Yeah, so that is very much the plan. Uh, if the facility is available in in ten fact over there, we would like to use that. Uh, for even the product which we are doing over here, and because Anupam's plants are already laid out for the next two three years, so we. Uh, but at the same time, if uh, those products which are made over there, and if they, if the facility, because you know you require specialized chemical uh, reactors or vessels for each individual uh, product, and you cannot do everything into a single, single reactor or the same reactor. So if there is a situation in which the reactors are available, or the systems or the plants are available in temple, we would want to use that. But if it is not. And if Anupam has those assets empty, then we would bring that product to Shiva uh, or to Buddha. Okay, sir, that's helpful. And just one, uh, uh, I think two small clarifications. So, did you mention two to three hundred crore uh, capex over the next two three years based on the permission? Is that uh, number correct? Two hundred to three hundred crore. That's on the time sex side, right? Yes. And how will that be funded again with the debt, or uh, you would be doing? I mean, you would be looking at other funding options as well? As of now, this is not decided, but uh, uh, once we are through with the plan, uh, we will be able to let you know, but this is not going to happen within the next three months. Uh, this is not going to start in the next three months, so I think uh, by the next control, we will be able to inform you more details on where and how the funding mechanism will be in, uh, implemented. Okay, okay. And uh, uh, sure, sir, that's helpful. And, uh, any other uh, incremental uh, uh, capex plan that you see on the Anupam side or no? As of uh, now, no. Yeah. As of now, no. Whatever you mentioned in the last earning call, yes, that is still there. As of uh, other than that, nothing. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, uh, that's it from me, sir. Uh, and uh, once again, uh, congrats and uh, thank you for your time, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraints, that was the last question. I would like to hand the floor back to Mr. Afzal Malkani for closing comments. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Uh, yes, Mr. Malkani, please go ahead. Yes, sir. Yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah, for the closing remarks. Yeah. 
So we aim to unlock the full potential of the tantech industry and drive significant value creation through synergies between Anupam and Tantech. And we really appreciate the support of our investor community and we listen.